This video is going to show you what you need to know about cells. We will look at animal, plant and bacteria cells, examine what is inside each of them and look at the role each of these components has. For the exam this is what you need to know. We're going to look at each of these in turn, at the types of cell and what's inside each of them. First let's look at animal cells as they are the simplest. Every animal cell except for red blood cells has a nucleus within it. The nucleus stores the DNA and so controls the activities of the cell. The cell is surrounded by a cell membrane which acts like a bag, keeping the cell contents inside and controlling which substances can enter or leave the cell. Most of the cell space is filled with the jelly-like cytoplasm, which is where most of the chemical reactions which keep the cell alive take place. Small parts of the cell, called organelles, are also supported by the cytoplasm. An example of an organelle is a mitochondria, which are where the cell's respiration takes place. Respiration, if you remember, is where the cell breaks down sugar to release some of that stored energy. These mitochondria are so small you won't see them using a simple microscope like those we have in school. All of the features we've seen in animal cells are also found in plant cells like this one. And each of these does the same job as they did in the animal cell. So what extra features do plant cells have? Well, outside the cell membrane, we find a thick cell wall. This gives the cell strength and shape. Chloroplasts are found in the green parts of plants, like leaves. This is where photosynthesis happens, making the sugar that the plant needs for respiration. Photosynthesis also requires water, making so each plant needs to keep its own store of water in the form of sap, which it keeps in its vacuole. This filled vacuole also keeps the cell a constant shape by filling the space and keeping it rigid. Both animals and plants are multicellular, which means an individual organism is made up of many, many cells which can take on different roles by specialising. This leads to a wide variety in types of cell and different shapes and sizes. However, they still all have the common features we've just looked at. Bacteria, on the other hand, are single-celled. So this cell is a whole individual organism. Bacteria are far smaller than plants or animal cells. So small, in fact, that there's no space for those organelles, like nucleus or mitochondria. This means the DNA in a bacteria is loose within the cell and not inside the nucleus. Most of the DNA is in a single large piece called chromosomal DNA. And this stuff is doing the same job as the DNA stored in the nucleus inside a plant or an animal cell. A bacteria also has small loops of DNA called plasmids, and these have just a few extra genes on. Some bacteria cells are able to move themselves, and they do this by rotating flagella and using them like a rotor. Not all bacteria cells have these. So you should now know about animal cells, plant cells, and bacteria cells, and the function of each of those parts listed on the screen in front of you now.